The price of petrol and diesel has dropped recently, and electricity prices are still sky high. Is an electric car still cheaper to run? Is it still worth buying? Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Many people are claiming it's now cheaper to run a petrol or diesel internal combustion engine car than an electric vehicle. So let's open this video with my actual figures from the last 12 months just to whet your appetite. I drove 11,500 miles in my Tesla Model S in the last 12 months and my total cost for charging was £830, meaning 7p per mile driven. Not a guess, not an estimate, this was my actual cost. I will go into some detail shortly explaining how I arrived at this figure, showing all the calculations and will include an estimate for the next 12 months. Fossil fuel consumption, miles per gallon, and cost per mile driven requires just a little bit of maths. I personally never found the dashboard MPG display figure on my previous Citroen C4 Picasso diesel anywhere near accurate, so I always calculated my own exact figure. So no matter what car you have, what fuel it uses, no matter how you drive, to get that accurate figure just fill your tank to the absolute brim, zero your trip meter, drive normally for a good distance, say 100 or 200 miles, then top it back up right to the brim. Divide the distance travelled in miles by the amount of fuel used to top back up in whole gallons. An example, if you drove 150 miles and it took 3.5 gallons to top it right back up to the brim again, then your miles per gallon is 42.857, uh, call it 43 miles per gallon. To calculate the cost in pence per mile driven, first find your local fuel price. Here's the average UK official price summary as of 17th of March 2023. Your local prices will almost certainly be different to these. Petrol is £1.48 per litre, diesel £1.66. I'm really old, so I prefer to work in gallons. One UK gallon is 4.55 litres, therefore 4.55 times £1.48 makes petrol £6.73 a gallon and diesel £7.55. Again, please use your own local prices and multiply your price per litre by 4.55 to get the price per gallon. My previous diesel car, before switching to electric, regularly achieved 43 miles per gallon average. My old diesel car's cost per mile, based on today's prices, would be £7.55 divided by 43, that's 17.5p, so I'll write it down to 17p for simplicity. I prepared a simple table that shows the cost per mile for a range of mile per gallon using both petrol and diesel. I'm not going to read them all out, but as an example, a petrol car doing 30 miles a gallon costs 22 pence a mile, while a diesel car doing 50 miles per gallon costs 15 pence a mile. If anybody wants to know the metric equivalent, let me know in the comments below and I'll do the calculations and upload the table. Are my Tesla figures real, you ask? Have I fiddled them to make it look so cheap? Well, good question, so let's see. My Tesla fuel consumption is measured in miles per kilowatt hour rather than miles per gallon. You could do the same exercise as above, charge to 100%, drive 100 or 200 miles, then charge up again, divide the mileage by the kilowatt hours, etc. However, every EV has a combined digital trip and energy meter, which measures the consumption really accurately. Mine here shows four trip readings. There's total current for this trip, total since the last charge, trip A and trip B. Now trip A I just leave running long term so I can see what the car really averages over more than a whole year, in this case 17,500 miles. Trip B I use and reset periodically but mainly I leave it running so I can see if my driving style is changing over time. Now to confirm these figures my Tesla app lists the home and superchargers I've used, how much I put in, when and how much it cost me, and this is backed up by my bank statement which shows those exact amounts being deducted from my account. No, I'm not going to publish my bank account. Though these figures are real. Many makes, Tesla for example, go even further. Not only do all these calculations for you, but offer a lot more besides. It's fun digging deep into the figures, or am I just sad in my old age? Most EVs show an energy figure expressed as watt-hours used per mile driven. This is similar to the European digital convention of litres per 100 kilometres. As I said, I much prefer miles per kilowatt hour, so on a calculator simply divide 1000 by your actual figure, mine is 342, um, as shown above, and this gives 2.923 miles per kilowatt hour, we'll round it up to 3. 
As a quick guide, very, very few EVs do less than two miles per kilowatt hour, no matter how you drive them. Most will happily do around three, new models are usually nearer four, and some now stretch to five. The latest version of my Model S does four miles per kilowatt hour. That's 33% better than mine. Before I show my uh, calculations, I just want to congratulate the clear winner, EVs which charge for free. Today, 17th of March 2023, here in the UK, I can find many chargers that are totally and completely free to use. Dealers often offer free charging to their customers, some retail parks have free charging, no joking, totally free. Stay in certain hotels, eat in certain restaurants, and the charging is free. Use these and your cost per mile is zero. A winner by a million miles, not even close. You can't get free petrol or diesel anywhere that I know. It's not easy, but some people do charge totally free, spend nothing to run the cars, but realistically, most of us don't and won't. Now, I could just plug in at home on standard tariff, 34 pence per kilowatt hour, but that ignores the cracking deals available to all EV owners who can charge at home. Mine is with EDF, G uh, Go Electric 98 tariff. Sign up for the best one in your area and get cut price off peak electricity. Over 80%, sometimes nearly 90% of all my charging is at 13.6 pence per kilowatt hour, done overnight off peak between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. while I sleep or at any time over the weekend. The rest is either at Tesla superchargers or free hotels. Had I never charged at a supercharger and managed to do all my charging at home off peak, then my 3,860 kilowatt hours would have all been charged at 13.6p, giving a grand total not of £830 a year, but just 525 or 4.5 per mile. That rounded up to 5p. That's £44 per month or half the price of a full tank of petrol. Ah, but what if I can't charge at home and can only charge at Tesla superchargers? Okay, let's do that. 3,860 kilowatt hour times today's average price at Tesla supercharger of 40p is 1,544 pound a year, divided by 11,500 miles, that's 13.4 pence a mile. Let's round that down to 13. About the same as a petrol car doing 50 miles per gallon. But it's simply not realistic charging only at superchargers. That's just like driving to a motorway services nearby every time you fill your car up with fuel. You just wouldn't do it. If I couldn't charge at home, I'd drive down to my local Tesco superstore, just over half a mile away, and use the Podpoint public chargers, which cost 28 pence per kilowatt hour. That's twice my home rate, but half the supercharger rate. Doing this would cost nine pence a mile. And if that one was full, there's hundreds of others nearby. And if I use this more than 80% of the time, but still have to use superchargers occasionally, that will bring the cost up to about 11 pence a mile. London's dearer, they do have a lot of chargers, uh, but they're on average probably around about 40, 45 plate P. I'm glad I don't live there. But even if it was 80 pound a month, I'd be an absolute bargain compared to paying 15 pound per day or 105 pound per week in congestion charges if you use your car each day. EVs, of course, are exempt, to are totally free. So realistically, my Tesla Model S could be run from as little as 5p per mile if I always charge at home, to 7p if I mix home and superchargers, to 9p using only Tesco chargers, or 11p using both Tesco and superchargers, which is ridiculously cheap motoring. Now the eagle-eyed among you will notice that the penalty for getting cheap rate electricity for 10 hours off peak each weeknight and all day Saturday and Sunday is that my peak rate is ridiculously dear at 53p compared to the standard tariff of around 34. So why on earth did I choose this? Well it's simple. I adjusted my lifestyle just slightly and now only use the heavy appliances, dishwasher and washing machine either after 9 o'clock on timer or at the weekend. Midweek, because of work, house is mostly empty during the day, I tend to use the microwave for quick meals and only use the oven at the weekend. And everything, the whole house, including fridge, freezer, lighting, TV, they all drop to off-peak at nine o'clock every night and go through to seven in the morning. 
This way I've switched well over 80% of my annual electricity consumption to off-peak at the 13.6p, and less than 20% remains at peak 53p. Over the last year, my average total cost per kilowatt, peak and off-peak, was around 22p, and that's cheaper than everything being a standard rate of 34p. Finally, my projection for the next 12 months, no idea what my mileage will be, but if it stays the same, my home charging will remain roughly the same, 13.6p, while my supercharging has reduced over 20%, from 51p average last year to 40p average right now. So I expect my cost per mile to reduce just slightly. Thanks for watching to the end. The message is simple. EVs can be really cheap to run. If you buy one, don't just plug it in at home or the nearest charger. Do some real homework, shop around, find the best and cheapest way to charge it. It is a rapidly changing market. There are such short term challenges, such as not having anywhere near enough chargers exactly where you want them. But at the same time, most people will only ever need to charge once a week. High power, super fast chargers are springing up everywhere. And Tesla has, over the last year, reduced charging times by 30% while also reducing the price by over 20%. And for those long journeys or road trips, well, I'll simply accept that the price you will pay will be much dearer than for the rest of the year. But it's only one trip, so enjoy it. I have videos specifically covering Tesla chargers and road trips in a Tesla coming out shortly, so please subscribe so as not to miss them. And if you've liked this video, please click the like button and the bell icon.